Right, turning to the gearbox, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plunger assembly in and the cam plate that uh, it engages with. I'll show you in a minute, but basically the plunger goes up underneath the gearbox and these are the plungers that are spring operated and the plungers then these uh, nipple ends go into the groove on the cam plate as it turns around to select the gears so that will go in there that would be first gear then neutral then second gear third fourth and fifth Okay, so as the cam plate moves around, it uh, these plungers run and like lock when it comes to a little dent, and that's what sort of locks it in gear and stops it from moving on to the next gear. Um, okay, and now I've got two plungers here. I've got the original plunger, uh, which is just sort of ball tipped plunger. Well, they said just a tipped plunger rather, steel plunger. And then I've got this upgrade here. Now this is uh, a tip plunger, so it's actually got a little ball bearing, a little ball bearing in the end, uh, and that helps to make for a slicker gear change. So this little upgrade is available from David Drew, uh, who's a long-time uh, owner, and sort of makes various little mods for. Uh, trilance and so on and I'll put his email address in the blurb underneath this video so that if you were uh, if you wanted one of these plungers then uh, get them from him I think they're for I think he does he certainly does them for all triples and possibly for twins as well triumph twins I'm not sure but worth contacting him and asking okay so I'm going to put the I'm going to loosely now fit the plunger and the cam plate in the gearbox so basically that spring will go in there then the plunger goes in there and fits in inside the plunger housing and that's a special washer that will go on the outside and that will now be redundant so I'm just going to loosely screw that into the bottom of the gearbox okay that's where it screws in this is the plunger housing so it screws up from underneath and so we'll have the plunger sticking up there and then this boss here is where the cam plate goes and so we're going to put the cam plate in. And the reason I'm doing this now is we're then going to turn the cam plate round a few times and just check that everything's smooth. Because if the cam plate is smooth, then we should have a nice smooth gearbox. That's sort of one of the elements to make sure that the gearbox is nice and smooth. Right, actually, the, the first thing I've done is to put the plunger in with a spring and just make sure it's got a nice smooth action. I just mentioned this because I put the plunger in and it just sees solid. There's, I hadn't cleaned it out properly and there's so much horrible gunge in, in there because this acts like as a little mini sump all the bits and that come and sit in the bottom of the plunger and uh, so that was certainly not springing up and down and uh, I'm also checking the cam plate uh, that these grooves here aren't worn uh, these grooves are where the uh, selector dogs uh, selector forks actually um, run in that actually change the gears and uh, so if, if the grooves are worn, then it can lead to a sloppy gear change or notchy gear change and things jumping out of gear and so on. Yeah, it all feels good. There's no excessive wear in these slots. Okay, so I've screwed the uh, plunger in now and uh, I've put in the cam plate. And then uh, what I'm doing is I'm just checking that it all moves smoothly and that everything works well. So. Um, here's the cam plate so at the moment that notch is neutral so that's first and it won't go any further around than first back to neutral second third fourth fifth and again there's another sort of uh, lock uh, locking tab there to stop it going any further so I'm just checking that it all moves around nice and smoothly from one gear to the next which it's doing quite positive and smooth and that's why you can probably get the idea now of why having a bull tipped uh, plunger just gives it uh, that little bit of a smoother action rather than a plain uh, just a just a steel 
plunger. So yeah, I'm happy with that. It's all working nicely. It's all rotating. It's all nice and tight. So it's a nice, smooth, positive gear change. So as far as the cam plate and plunger are concerned, I'm happy with that. Right, I'm starting to inspect and clean up the gears uh, on the gearbox. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can remove the oil seal from the uh, end of this uh, high gear. Uh, this, this is the gear that goes through the bearing at the back of the gearbox on the main shaft. And we're going to be replacing this oil seal. So uh, I'll see if I can oik it out to begin with. And uh, there we go. Eventually, using this tool, I've managed to prise the oil seal out. But as you can probably see from the state of the oil seal, uh, that wasn't the easiest of jobs. It should have just popped out, but of course, it didn't want to pop out. Right, I mean, finally removed that oil seal. I'm going to, I've got some white spirit, and I'm going to clean out hey what remains of that oil seal but also some of the dirty oil from inside this uh, high gear because i know from taking the gearbox apart how uh, gungy the oil was however you want to be really really careful you don't damage these needle ro roller bearings in so doing now by that i mean you don't want to turn the bearings around once they've been clean with white spirit because as soon as they're clean and free of oil then you're damaging them any bearing you turn it over dry you know white spirit clean it then just by running it round a couple of times you can you can ruin the bearing yeah so i'm cleaning that out i'm giving it a good clean just to try and get rid of that old oil make sure there's none of that uh, old oil seal in either now there are two needle roller bearings in the uh, gearbox, uh, in this high gear as it's called, and they run one this end and one this end, and they run on the gearbox main shaft. Now, before I clean them, I've had, um, I've, uh, I, I ran them round and they seemed okay. So that's why I'm not replacing them. They're a bit of a pain to replace. There is, I have done, a video of replacing these that's on the t150 uh the work i did on the gearbox and primary chain case of the t150 if you want to see about how to replace these bearings um, but in our case i think they're fine so what i'm going to do before i do anything else is i'm just going to put some gearbox oil on the bearings that's probably enough and just uh and just make sure there's oil actually on the bearings okay and now i'm going to turn them around yeah and they feel they feel good that's nice and smooth let's try this one yeah that's nice and smooth they're both smooth i'm just they're both turning nicely these needle rollers they can jam uh, they can lock solid these needle roller bearings and then what happens is the shaft is simply spinning on you know a locked bearing instead of the bearing turning and you don't really want that to happen because it'll wear the bearing away but they're good they're good right i've finished uh cleaning and checking the uh the gears on the main shaft so that's the main shaft and this is uh the order that they go on the main shaft roughly um one tip i'll give you is that uh, if you're unsure you know, hold on, which, which is, is it this one or that one? That uh, they have part numbers. They gloriously have part numbers. Uh, when I can, there you go. They gloriously have part numbers uh, stamped on them. Yeah. And we have the uh, parts book. And that tells you, you know, which gear is which. So I often refer to that. I think, hang on, is that, does that go before that? Which gear is that? Oh, yeah, part number. And it's on there. So uh, that's always pretty handy because I always think, hang on, does that go on first or is that one going on? You know, so a good one to know. 
so they're all cleaned up. That's the the, the gears on the the uh, main shaft. So I think we've got. I think we've got fourth, uh, fifth, fourth, third, second, and first. So going from largest to smallest on the main shaft. Okay, and now I'm going to do. I've got all the gears on the low shaft. And I'm now going to do uh, exactly the same. Take them apart and clean them up. Oh yeah. So I checked all the teeth etc and they all look to be in good condition so i'm happy there's one that i'm not sure about and that's this is it fourth gear is it now you can see that there's some pitting and that on the teeth but to be honest i don't think that that is that bad to warrant replacement i'll probably live to eat my words when the things start going but i think uh, okay not sure that's the only one you know there's a fair bit of pitting perhaps there's more pitting than I thought at first I'm not sure might be prudent to change that one but they're not cheap these damn gears <laughs> 